Today is July 20th, 2011, and as most of you probably know by now, Mac OS X Lion has officially come out in the Mac App Store. So what I've done is I have downloaded it from the Mac App Store. And in case you don't know by now, I am running a Hackintosh. It's a computer I built myself. It runs OS X, in case you don't know that. You can check out all the videos on my channel on it. And a lot of people are going to be wondering, can I update to Lion? And the answer is yes. And this video is going to be showing you how. And there's a few things you're going to need. First, you're going to need to buy uh, Mac OS X Lion. Um, buy it from the App Store. It's only thirty dollars, and there's really no excuse to not buy it. A lot of people can come up with thirty bucks pretty easily. So uh, support Apple for making a great OS, and just just buy it. You know, it's not asking too much. It's only thirty dollars. But so yes, you're gonna need Mac OS X Lion from the App Store, and uh, there are I will say up front there are various methods in order to do this. But the one I'm gonna be using is from TonyMacX86.com. Go ahead and check him out. The links right down there in the description. And so, from there, I'm gonna be using a utility called XMove. And I'll get more into that later and everything. So you're going to need Mac OS X Lion from the App Store, XMove, and you're also going to need to know how to partition your hard drive. Uh, it's just very easy through disk utility. If you don't know, I will uh, walk you through the whole process. And so in this video, I will be doing an upgrade to Lion. I will not be doing a fresh install. That is for my next video, which I will, I will show you guys how to do a clean install, clean slate with Mac OS X Lion. Because even though it is from the Mac App Store, you can make a bootable DVD or a bootable flash drive and you can do a clean install or you could even do a clean install from this installation so but I'll be doing an update with this method so before I ramble anymore let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is run the Mac OS X line upgrade so um, obviously like I said you just download this from the App Store right there it's not that far away just go ahead and click that and download it it's about a 3.49 gigabyte download so depending on your internet that could take a while but so once you download it, um, it should just automatically open up and you'll be presented with this guy, that majestic king of the jungle. And so um, I will say up front that when you run this, it does not actually install line, it just copies the files, and which will be used later to actually update. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and click continue. Agree. Macintosh HD, like I said, I'll be doing an upgrade, so there's no need to really go anywhere else unless you really know what you're doing and you want something very specific for your system. So I'll go ahead and click install, type in my very secure password, and hit OK. And so now this is copying the files. So once copying those files from the line installer is done, it's going to ask you to reboot your system, and of course you're going to do that. And so now once you boot it back up, now you want to open up Disk Utility. So I'm going to go ahead in the spotlight, type Disk, Disk Utility will come up. And so here's all my hard drives, and like I said, I will be doing just an upgrade, so um, depending if you want to do like a clean install, this might not be necessary, depending on your installation method. But for the purpose of this video and the perp like the way I recommend for doing an upgrade, I think this is the best way. So we're going to go up to the 500 gigabyte partition, whatever here. This is my hard drive, so um, if you don't want to click on your uh, individual partitions, click on the entire hard drive and come over to the partition tab. And I, um, as you can see, I have three partitions. I will not be touching these. I'm just going to be touching this. So I'm going to go ahead and click this little plus button here, and that will create a new partition. And you want it to be 8 gigabytes um, is is plenty. So 8 gigabytes, that's fine. I'm just going to call this install. So you can call it whatever you would like. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit apply, and that will create that 8 gigabyte partition. All right, so that is now complete. And so now you can just go ahead and close that disk utility. That's all we needed to do. So now once disk utility is closed, what you want to do is come over and open up wherever your line is, wherever you downloaded your line installation to. In my case, it's just applications. And now this this next part is pretty important as far as this method. So go ahead and go to show package contents. It's just a right click on the OS X line icon. Go into contents, shared support, and this install ESD.DMG. You want to go ahead and just double click that and that will mount it. And uh, for whatever reason, no one can really figure out why at this point in time. For the next step, this won't work unless this is mounted. So now what we're going to do is um, you want to click that link right in the description, and that will take you to Tony Mac Forms, and where you can download XMove. And this is this is going to help us install Lion. So now what you want to do is just click through this, continue, continue, agree, now stop. Right here, you want to make sure you change the install location because by default it's set to go to Macintosh HD. However, if you install it to this hard drive, bad things will happen. So you want to make sure you change your install location. Can't say that enough. And so now you want to change it to that partition you just made. In my case, it would be install. And go ahead and click continue. Install. Put your password in. And go ahead. And this might take a minute or two depending on your system. Sometimes it may freeze. If that's the case, just simply restart. 
uh, the, uh, the edge close the installer, repartition that drive, just erase it, format it, and try this again. So as you can see, this installation was successful. So go ahead and close that. And now what you want to do is you, um, you want to just go ahead and reboot. So my machine is now rebooting. And you're also going to need like a USB keyboard. Um, my Apple keyboard will not work because um, it's Bluetooth and it doesn't work in the BIOS. So keep that in mind. And so now what we're going to do is instead of booting into Macintosh HD like usual, we're going to boot into that install partition. Xmove went, went ahead and made that a bootable partition for us. So I'm going to go ahead and hit a key there. And as you can see, if I can zoom in, we now have that install partition. And there's my Windows and my backup drive. There we go. So now, do not, do not boot into this. Go ahead and boot into install. After a few seconds, that Apple logo is there. And this is probably about the standard wait time just for it to boot up like from a installation DVD. So as you can see, there we go. It's now booting. So as you can see, we're greeted very nicely by all these various languages. And so we're going to go ahead and use English, that's probably a good idea. And we're going to go ahead and click the, click the little next arrow. And we're going to continue, agree to the license terms. And now we're going to select where we want to install, so Macintosh HD. Customize. Interesting that there are no options here. Those are probably, um, if you just run it like on a legit Mac or something, there would probably be actually be options there. But we're going to go ahead and install this to Macintosh HD. and we are now installing. So that says 30 minutes, or 36 minutes rather, but I can almost guarantee it's not going to take that long. On average I can install Mac OS X within 15 to 20 minutes, so I will be back when this is done installing. So the installation has just completed and I hit restart. So my system will now restart and from the bootloader you just boot into Macintosh HD and you will have a working installation of Lion. So we're booting up here. Shouldn't take too long until we get to the bootloader. And I will say if you're using iBoot, this will not work because iBoot does not work with Lion yet. So I'm going to go ahead and hit a key there just to make this a little bit faster so the auto countdown doesn't have to set in. So I booted into Macintosh HD. And it does, it probably will take it a second, like a while longer to boot because of all the changes. Just like any operating system would, you know, the computer kind of freaks out. It's like, whoa, what just happened? So it has to kind of reconfigure everything, but that is pretty much how you update to Lion right on a Hackintosh, day one, right from the App Store. So it isn't quite the way Apple intended, but it does work. So the screen has gone black, and we are now greeted with a white screen, I will say it's not blue. So that's Tuxera NTFS, that's just a third party app I have that detects um, NTFS partitions. Must not work with Lion just yet, but you can just ignore that error. But as you can see by that glowing checkbox, I am now running Lion. And so you can also see that things are not um, as fast because, like I said, this is the first boot, so it has to reset up everything. All my startup applications are here, but like I said, because it's a whole new mail program, I have to set everything up. In order to use this, I need to set up Java. So when you do, if you do uh, decide to go to the update route, a lot of this stuff will probably happen because you know your computer just wasn't ready for Lion yet. I mean, you need a, like a new version of Java. You need to reset up everything. And here now we have scrolling in Lion. This is interesting. And here is my trackpad, my cursor. As you can see, it's now back to the way Lion was meant. And so there you have it. I will go ahead and I will open up. Um, Oh, that's cool. My, even my hot corners are still here. Get me an emission control. But anyway, up to about this Mac. And as you can see, somewhere up there, 10.7. I am still running 64-bit. Everything is good to go. Go into System Profiler. So obviously this is not a Mac Pro, but I just edited my SM BIOS. Uh, memory, 12 gigabytes. It shows all my RAM slots, storage, etc., etc. So things are working great. Actually, I will show myself just kind of clicking this. Start using OS 10 line. A very satisfying final click. So that's pretty much it for you guys. Um, I hope this video helped you if you're scared of running Lion on your Hackintosh. Um, it does work great. Like I said, day one, Lion just came out today, and I have it running on my Hackintosh. Thanks to Tony Mac.
um, the whole forum there. If you have any problems, there's a link in the description. Click that right now. It'll take you right to Tony Mac Forums. If there's something I can't answer, trust me, that is the place to ask it. So before this video gets any longer, thank you for watching. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also check out itechcity.org and at itechcity on Twitter. And I have some reinstalling of kex to do. My audio is no longer working, as you can see by that little no sign. But that's as simple as reinstalling a kext. So you guys know how to do that from my previous videos. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, and I will be back uh, probably either today, or um, not today, uh, tomorrow or the day after with a fresh install tutorial, which is a little different. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.